So, I hope to motivate you over the next 15, 20 minutes. And a few people has, have asked me over the past few years, what's your it? You, because you seem to have it. And I'm humbled when people say that, so I was inspired to put this together. Because it's something I say all the time to my patients. Are you interested or are you committed? This goes for a number of different things. I just can't lose weight. You know why? Because you're only interested in losing weight. If you're committed or it became mission critical, you would find a resource, a person that's done it before, model, mimic, copy, plagiarize, steal their attitudes and actions, and you'd get it done. So if you're not currently experiencing what you desire, emotionally, spiritually, physically, in your business, in your relationships, ask yourself if you're interested or you're actually committed. And it all starts with a decision. A decision to make some change, but more importantly, to take some action. Huh? You good? Is that you, Josh? Nope. So, first key to success, I came up a little bit, so don't see the word. When I ask people all the time, what do you think the first key to success is? Decisiveness. Being able to make a decision. Not being, not the paralysis of analysis, of overthinking something. Making a wrong decision is much better than making no decision at all. Because once we find out it's the wrong decision, we can learn from it and move forward. A lot of people I talk to in the profession, they work 18 hours a week. I don't know why I don't have the practice of my dreams. Well, I'm part-time dad, I'm part-time mom. I get that, but there's resources for you to have the practice of your dreams, but you have to put in some time. So what would your life be like if you were a part-time spouse? if you worked part-time on being healthy, or I eat clean some of the time. Probably wouldn't get the results you're looking for. We need to have a vision. We talked about that earlier this morning. Be a leader and be able to delegate. But what do you delegate? I'm sure you've all heard it through seminars before. Either do it, delegate it, or dump it. If you're not gonna do it and you don't have somebody on your team that's gonna be able to do it for you, then maybe it's something you just eliminate procedurally out of your practice completely. You can't sell what you don't own. You can't have a front desk CA that has a poverty consciousness that's 17 years old and lives with their parents. Ask people for a $4,000 case plan if that's what you choose to do. You have to own it yourself before you delegate it. So my favorite story is from popcorn or soda to $4,000. 20 years ago, I remember my fiance at the time going to the movie. And I had about, after we bought the movie tickets, $7, including change in my pocket. And I said to her, she goes, we're going to get some snacks? I said, popcorn or soda? She said, what do you mean, or soda? I only have $7. So we all have to start from somewhere, right? We all have that story where we, we came from. But another person, a mentor of mine had told me the reason why patients aren't paying your fair fee that you're asking for is because you don't own it. So you can't delegate what you don't own, you can't sell what you don't own. So he challenged me, he said, what's your average case average? I said, okay, at the time we're talking $3,000, $4,000. How much of that do you have on you right now? So I, I have about 11 bucks. From that day forward, and I had to go to the bank to take it out, I carried $4,000 in my pocket wherever I went. The office, the gym, and definitely into our doctor's report. Because when I'm asking somebody for it, I don't need it. I have it in my pocket.
If you want to change something, just change it already. Everybody talks, I want, I want this. As soon as I have this, I'll be this. It doesn't necessarily work that way. We know the have, do, be principle. But if you really, really wanted to change it, you had, would have already done so. So the biggest question you could ask yourself after this weekend, Monday morning, what do you want? What really do you want out of life? What do you want out of your practice? What do you want out of your relationships? What do you want? Because you're getting something out of staying exactly where you are. It's comfort, security, I'm doing okay. Find out what you want and go after it. Nothing is as powerful as a changed mind. It's making that decision for change. It's what you think you are capable of. If you think you are capable of seeing 100 people a week, you will indeed see 100 people a week. But there's other people in the room that believe, truly believe with every cell of their body, that they're capable of seeing 100 people a day. If you want something out of life, just make change. So what, is, what does it take to change? Number one, you have to change the behavior because doing what you're doing now is getting the results you have now. Overcome negative habits. This is challenging and it's hard and use the power of affirmations. Say, I, you can't say, oh, I am 190 pounds or whatever it may be that you want to be at because now you're not saying something truthful. So you can say, I am on my way to becoming physically fit and mentally prepared and approaching my ideal weight with ease of 190 pounds. Some people never discover what their true talents are. Another question I want everybody to ask yourself before Monday morning in your office, what are your talents? So where do you start? Step up, raise your standards. Look for 10% improvement. Just think if we exercise 10% more, not necessarily length of time, but intensity. We just increase that intensity of our exercise 10%. And we, we ate better 10% of the time. We just made that better choice. I had the wonderful opportunity to connect with a longtime chiropractic friend of mine, Dr. Gary Hecht, front row. Thanks, hey Gary, how are you? We went to, we went to Cheesecake Factory. So something I personally ask myself, because eating healthy is important to me, Am I ordering the best thing for my body from this menu? Is this going to clog me or cleanse me? Our life is based on the amount and types of questions we ask ourselves. Discover what you're capable of, feel the power of pushing through whatever is holding you back and get to the other side to experience your true self. It's fearful to make change, right? Step into your fears. Fear, feel the fear and do it anyway. When you step into your fears and continue to push yourself to go on, something good will happen to you, I promise and guarantee, in your practice life. It's going to take courage, develop courage. If you don't develop the courage to do that which is given you to do, you will begin to lose faith. Well, maybe I really don't want that practice of 400 or 500 a week. Maybe it's too much work. And you begin to listen to others and seek approval of others and eventually drop down to the level, right? We are a mirror image of the five people we spend most of our time with, right? And where I saw that quote was in South Florida and St. Augustine is where all the entrepreneurs of the day used to summer because they would take a two week train ride down to South Florida, down to the east coast of Florida. And it was Thomas Edison and Henry Ford Firestone, all, all the entrepreneurs, the men who built America, they surrounded themselves, they spent summers together. So how much time do you have left? We don't know. Most of us don't use the stuff that we brought into this universe. Stop wasting your valuable time, begin taking action. And one of my favorite quotes, the trouble is you think you have time. Act as if you were going to die tomorrow and live life as if you're going to live forever. Be relentless. If you truly want something, you got to be relentless. 
that constant persistence. Learn to be resourceful and creative. Find a way. Make a phone call. Call someone. Look to the person to your left. If you're not networking with this mastermind of powerful people in this room, you're doing yourself a disservice. Part of being in the New Beginnings family is having a resource of m multiple ultra successful people. Do whatever it takes. And more importantly, you've heard this one before, never, ever, ever, ever give up. The only time you'll fail, I teach my kids this all the time. The only time you fail is when you give up. And my, my nine-year-old son, he's like, yeah, I know, Dad. Thomas Edison didn't find 10,000 wrong ways to make a light bulb. He found 10,000 ways not to make a light bulb. Right? So he knows these, these quotes I say all the time. Successful people practice. So looking around at, at successful people that you see in this room, the people on the board that have been in practice 20, 30, 40 years, 50 years, successful people are rewarded in public for what they practice in private. Are you practicing your craft? Because you must be a master of your craft, not just in technique, but in communication, in confrontational tolerance. Doc, I think I only want to come in once next week. Sees, all right, no problem. Hey, high five. I want you to like me, please, my friend. No, not acceptable. Confrontational tolerance. Practice, perfect practice makes perfect. Successful people and successful chiropractors are not born. They are created through consistent, persistent, perfect practice. So there's something we call a winner's quality. And it's the power to hold on and endure. That's what a winner's quality is. Can you hold on? Can you endure? Can you measure your failures, make some distinctions and change? Whenever we, we're, we do an event in our practice, we have a post-event meeting. My entire team, we sit down, what worked, what was great, what was not so great, what are we going to eliminate, what are we going to improve better, what are we going to bring to the table next time? Or did this event not, not necessarily our ideal person that we're looking to attract into our practice or into our life? Maybe we're not going to do this event anymore. So this winner's quality exists and becomes available to any man or woman when they're in the state of mind, when they know exactly what it is they want and are fully determined not to quit until they achieve it. There's a greatness in you. Tune out the critics on the outside, but more importantly, tune out the critic inside. That negative self-talk. If our, you've heard this before, I'm sure. If our friends spoke to us the way we speak to ourselves, we wouldn't have any friends. Right? You talk about, oh, I dropped a fork on the floor. How many times do you see people do this? Oh, you stupid idiot. You dropped a damn fork. Ah, you know, stand up. You're not stupid. You're not an idiot. You dropped a friggin' fork. You have a couple of options. Throw it over your shoulder, eat with your hands. Take it and wipe it underneath your armpit or your shirt. Get another fork. But you're not stupid. You're not a moron. So, Repeat this affirmation with me. I will harness my will. I will not let anything stop me. I deserve this. My human spirit is powerful and unstoppable. I live my life with passion. And I live my life with drive. Don't go through life with your brakes on. Decide what you're going to push yourself and work on yourself daily. Every day improvement. Goal for 10% improvement in multiple aspects of your life. Convince yourself on you and your ability, and you will see the difference in the things that you are doing. You are unstoppable, so don't let anyone ever stop you or tell you your dreams are silly. So this sums it up. Perfect timing, five minute video. Enjoy. There is nothing as powerful as a changed mind. You can change your hair, your clothing, your address, your spouse, your residence. But if you don't change your mind, the same experience will perpetuate itself over and over again 
because everything outwardly changed, but nothing inwardly changed. If you want something out of life, if you want to change yourself, if you want to acquire something, if there's some goal that you want to reach, changing your behaviors, overcoming negative habits, it's challenging, it's hard. Most people go through life never discovering what their talents are. Most people never develop their talents. The only thing that's gonna make you happy, my friend, in this year or any other, is to step up. It's to raise the standard, it's to discover what you're capable of and feel that incredible power of pushing through whatever's holding you back and get to the other side of more of your true self. That's what this game's all about. When you step into your fears and continue to push yourself to go on, something happens for you. If you look at somebody who's really successful and you think, wow, I mean, they're, they're so amazing, they're such a genius, you gotta dig underneath and you gotta remember something. People are rewarded in public for what they've practiced for years in private. If you don't develop the courage to do that which has been given you to do, and you spend a lot of time going around trying to convince other people or trying to get their approval, what will happen is that you will lose your nerve and other people will convince you that what you're doing doesn't have any value and you'll give up on your dream. How much time do you have left? How much time do you have left? When you start thinking about that, we don't know. Most of us don't use the stuff that we have brought into the universe. Stop wasting valuable time. If you want something, you have got to be relentless. You've got to learn how to become resourceful. You've got to learn how to become creative. The power to hold on in spite of everything, the power to endure, this is the winner's quality. The hunger, the ability to face defeat again and again without giving up. This is a winner's quality. What this power is, I cannot say. All I know is that it exists and it becomes available only when a man or a woman is in that state of mind in which he or she knows exactly what he or she wants and is fully determined not to quit until they find it. There's greatness in you and you've got to learn how to tune out the critics outside and the critic inside. I'm going to harness my will and I'm not going to let anything stop me. I deserve this. Most people give up on themselves easily. You know the human spirit is powerful? There's nothing as powerful. It's hard to kill the human spirit. You are unstoppable. Live your life with passion. With some drive. Most of us go through life with our brakes on. Holding back. Decide that you're going to push yourself. You've got to focus on you. And as you convince you, as you sell yourself, every day, every day, every day, you will begin to see a difference in the things that you're doing. Selling yourself on your ability to perform a job, to achieve a certain objective. Telling yourself every day, here I go again. And I got what it takes. This is my day and nothing out here is going to stop me. Here's the change. Joe Hooter!